The 13F filings of Michael Burry is out and he has bought seven new stocks uh, at a total value of $30 million. And these stocks could have some big potential moves and can be some buying opportunities for the investors out there. Burry normally tends to have like a cigarette butt investing style, which is taught by Benjamin Graham in his book, The Intelligent Investor. This is kind of different from Warren Buffett style because Warren Buffett is generally a long-term investor and here he kind of puts in a lot of capital for that kind of uh, trading strategy. Uh, so in this video, I'll explain to you my thesis on why Burry has bought these stocks. So you can, you can pick up on this and then probably decide on whether to buy on it, but make sure that you do your due diligence as well. So the first company that we're going to talk about is Black Knight. So Black Knight is loan servicing management company. So what they do is they kind of do the documentations and the management to speed up the loan application and the loan origination process. So if I can go to their revenue breakdown, uh, so you can see their software solutions, which is what we discussed before, uh, gives them the chunk of their revenue. It's 84% comes from that. Uh, they also have data analytics, which is a smaller amount of returns, but their operative income margin is 21%, which is quite good. Uh, so the company is pretty decent, uh, except for the fact that it has got a bit of debt. The debt to equity ratio is 1.06. A uh, substantial amount is in long term debt. Uh, long term debt generally happens to be a fixed interest rate. So as you know, the Federal Reserve uh, for a substantial period of time had an extremely low interest rate. So most likely uh, this uh, loans, the long term borrowings loan happens to be uh, at this lower interest rates. They only started raising the interest rates since April and May and June in 2022. And that's when they started to increase the interest rates rapidly. So if I can go to the quick FS and go into the balance sheet and go into long term debt, you can see the long term debt has started from 2014 and all the way to 2021 now. So it is basically um, at a lower interest rates, most likely, and they don't have any current debt, not much about current debt. So they don't have high interest rate loans. They generally tend to have um, lower interest rate loans based on the interest rate comparison. So I actually did a YouTube video on how to value uh, um, or how to calculate the intrinsic value of a company. So based on that, I did a discount cash flow valuation of Black Knight at uh, earnings growth rate of 10%. So that was the uh, growth rate for the past five years on the earnings per share. So I did that and I had a roughly valuation of $55. The stock price is now currently trading at $63 a share. So it's almost close, slightly above the or fair value, but again, the fair value is kind of conservative. Um, so it's kind of okay to buy the stock, but that's not the big elephant in the room. This is not why Michael Burry is buying the stocks. So I went deeper into it. So I went into their transcript page. So this is from Seeking Alpha and they have got the earnings call transcript. So when I was reading through, that's when I happened to know Interconnell Exchange is trying to buy Black Knight at $85 per share. But remember the stock price now uh, is trading at $63 a share. Uh, so it is trading below the negotiated price of $85. So normally when a company decides to acquire another company, it's not as simple as you think. There's lots of negotiation on the table. Uh, there can be lots of um, legal battles going on. There could be lots of problems going on. So what happened was there was a problem. They had some issue with the Federal Trade Commissions. Um, so the U.S. lawmakers are saying that the ICE, the Intercontinental Exchange, would gain in the mortgage data market, and that could create a bit of a monopoly, and that could increase costs for the consumers. So that's the Federal Trade Commission uh, is making that statement. So that has created a situation where uh, the deal is kind of in a limbo; uh, nothing's going on forward. So that's why the stock price has gone down to sixty-five dollars a share. But there has been some positive feedbacks. So this was similar to uh, the Elon Musk Twitter kind of a takeover, which took a while as well. Uh, and many of the analysts are coming over saying that the deal is most likely to go through because the lawsuit um, from the Federal Trade Commission might not succeed. So what Michael Burry really is trying to do is that since the market is now trading at the $60 range, 
if the deal doesn't go through, it's okay because the market is trading at a fair value, so he doesn't lose much. If the deal goes through, he gets $85 a share, which is a huge return on investment. So these are the typical M&A places. M&A plays were also done by Hindenburg Research with respect to Twitter. If you're buying the stock, make sure that you get out quite fast, like once a deal goes through at $85. Once you hear the news that the deal is almost coming to conclusion, then you can get out of the position $80 or $85 at somewhere in that range. But if the deal doesn't go through, I don't recommend you stay in that position, even though uh, it is kind of fair valued because we don't know the long term repercussions of this company because they might try to sell it to some other uh, person or some other company and they might caught at a value lower than $65. So you don't want to be in that situation. So this is more of an M&A play. So in future, if you want to do mergers and acquisition kind of a trade, then this is a good reference. Uh, the other reference also the Twitter Elon Musk deal as well. Now the second stock is Coherent Group. So what they do basically is they uh, sell laser sensors and optics for all kinds of industries. And they are probably one of the largest photonics and compound semiconductor companies in the world. And they have been growing quite fast. So their revenue growth rate, if I can go into the income statement, has been going at an average of 11% the past three years alone. So you can see a consistent uh, increase in 11%. So if you can scroll down, you can see the net income is kind of sometimes negative and sometimes small. And that's because they are taking loans to expand at an aggressive rate. Uh, so what young companies generally tend to do is they, whatever money they get, they tend to expand as much as possible. And that's what Coherent Group has been doing. Uh, if you can go into the balance sheet, you can see the debt. And you can see the debt is again, longer term debt. And when you can see the rise of the longer term debt in the past three years, and whatever they received from the longer term debt, they have put it back to expanding in their property, plant and equipment, which is a sign that they are using this uh, loans wisely. Now, the reason why I think that um, Bury is interested in buying Core and Group is essentially uh, the fact that its price to book ratio is just 1.3. So uh, a very good question will be, what is a book value? So a book value is just basically the difference between the total assets minus total liabilities that gives you the book value, i.e. the total shareholder equity. Uh, so when the market is trading, let's say if you're going to sell a company, like sell it for scrap, what do you get? That's basically the book value. Uh, so sometimes the book value can be not that accurate because if it's like a depreciating product, like a factory or bricks or something like that, you know, you're not going to get much from it. But if it's like tangible resources, like say cash and investments and marketable securities, uh, it's pretty big. So we've seen the price to book value is just 1.3. Um, so if I can look into the market cap, which is the overview here, which is 6,605, and I go into the balance sheet, the current assets, which is available immediately, which is cash and quillens and the inventories and the accounts receivable, that itself contributes to 4,305. So out of that 6,000 something, 4,000 itself is available immediately. The property and plan is only 1,363. Now, even if you look at the debt, even though you see that the debt is quite high, I mean, it's not that high, but it's still 1,897. It has got enough cash to pay it off. Uh, and even if it doesn't have enough cash, it still has got enough retained earnings to pay it off. So the company is kind of in this uh, minimal downside protection and that gives it a really good position uh, for you to buy because the downside risk is kind of known. This kind of reminds me of Lee Lu's investment when he was a student in university. He used to buy many of the stocks from the book in the Japanese uh, stock books uh, which he bought it, which is trading below the book value. And there are many companies because of the current market scenario, which is trading at book value or below book value. And because this company is in a growing phase, this is like a win-win opportunity. And I think he might hold on to this stock for slightly longer than normal. I know he doesn't hold on to stocks for more than one year or two year, but I think like a one year or two year kind of a time span might be what he's looking for. And I think it's a great investment from my side of the fence. So the next investment Bori has done is in Alibaba. 
So he has invested close to 4.4 million in this specific stock. And I don't have to explain to you what Alibaba is. It's pretty much the Amazon of China. And China has got a huge population, so you can imagine how much revenue it generates. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to go and show you the revenue breakdown. So you might think it's just purely an e-commerce company, but it's not. Uh, it's also a cloud-based company. It's got an international commerce. I don't even know what that is. I haven't done much into that, but it's got local consumer services uh, and then many other innovation activities as well. So it, it is a powerful company. Uh, it's got a pretty good operating income margin, creates 11% from that gross profit. Um, and it does spend a lot of amount of money in research and development as well. So any new updates that you see in the Western market, it generally tends to copy it in China and Alibaba is in a really good uh, situation. But the stock price have been going down predominantly because of the Jack Ma incident and also the Chinese government regulations and whatever is going on between them. I don't know. Uh, but that could be one of the reasons. And also the current market sentiment as well. You know, people are selling shares to get some cash. Uh, for their own financial distress um, so if you can value this company like the valuation that i taught in our previous video on how to calculate the intrinsic value you will see that alibaba is very much undervalued i'm talking about um more than 50 percent margin of safety I, I saw somewhere it's like buying one dollar for 30 cents so that's the amount of margin of safety that you have for alibaba group so it's totally understandable while uh, why Michael Burry has invested in Alibaba Group. And it's just not Michael Burry. There are lots of other investors who have gotten into the party. Uh, but I'll just go into the financial statements first and just um, show you what the good things about Alibaba is. So you can see just from 2020 to 2022, it's sales have gone up from 72,000 to 130. But that's almost double the revenue. So you can see the growth rate is just ridiculously fast. And this year, the net income is slightly lower than the past few months, but then you have to look deeper into it. Why has the net income been low? Well, gross profit hasn't gone down. The operating profit hasn't gone down. So it's a net interest income that has cost. So uh, that's what's dug into this. So it could be some of the liabilities that they have to pay off the debt, or it might be a positive thing because they might be paying off their debt. And that's another thing that I've noticed in Alibaba. They've got their debt to equity is just 0 0.17, which is pretty good. You know, they're not uh, that much into trouble. So j let's just study their debt. Let's go to the balance sheet and see how much their debt is. So their debt is uh, 20,000 and 20,000 is a long term debt that they have. And they've got the short term debt and all those other things. Uh, but if you can see the retained earnings, their retained earnings itself is 85,000. So if they want to, they can pay off these long-term debt and the other liabilities if they want. So th there is a retained earnings, which is good enough. And that, that rise of the retained earnings uh, is what's giving them that room for debt to equity. So for people who don't know, debt to equity is basically total liabilities by uh, total shareholder equity. And you can see the total shareholder equity increasing substantially well. So overall, I just think that you know this this company uh, is quite in a good stable position just purely from the fact that it is extremely undervalued so the next stock Burry has invested is in jd.com so jd.com is not the uh, jd sports that you see in the uk it's another company it's another e-commerce company in um, china so i'm just going to go uh deep into their revenue breakdown so you guys get an idea on what it does so it's it's pretty much Alibaba or Amazon, but it's a younger day. So it's the second largest e-commerce company. So they do a pretty decent amount of volume uh, in the Chinese economy. Not as much as Alibaba, but they are out there and they're young and they're growing at a fast pace. Um, in fact, I'll, go, I'll come into the financial statement a bit, but it's just uh, going through the revenue breakdown. You can see it's basically a retail business. They've got some kind of logistics and other things associated with it. Uh, as of now, they are in a net income, negative net income, and we will look into that in the financial statement as well. They are spending lots of money uh, in operating expense, and that's actually a good sign because that's when you know the company is using all the money that they make from the operating income uh, to from the revenue uh, to actually spend it on the expense so that they can grow faster. So uh, if I can go to quick FS and go into their income statement, you can see the revenue is growing like substantially, like 114, 149, 155. That is a tremendous fast pace. It's actually growing faster when you look at a percentage rate than Alibaba. Um, 
and you can see if you go deep into it, you can see in some sometimes you can see the earnings per share is negative and everything. And don't be worried about earnings per share negative. Earnings per share negative sometimes is a good sign. It's normally heavily seen in fast growing companies because whatever money they are making from the uh, gross profit and the operating expense, they are spending it and trying to expand the company and grow the company as much as possible. And they are willing to take that negative earnings. Uh, so sometimes negative earnings is a good thing. And then suddenly it starts creating a good decent amount of positive earnings per share and that's when you see you know the stocks have skyrocketed so sometimes negative earnings is a great sign that you know the company is growing uh, so if i can go into the balance sheet and look at their long-term debt this long-term debt is 1916 but they have cash equivalents of 13,000, which is huge their retained earnings is not as high as compared to alibaba and that might be a bit of a drawback but i understand why their retain earnings is not that high it's because they are betting aggressively on their business growing uh, their debt to equity is also quite higher than alibaba so if i had to pick from alibaba and um jd it's kind of alibaba would be the safer bet but jd.com will be the aggressive bet if you want a bigger return on your investments so the exposure for Michael Berry in the kind of e-commerce, I wouldn't say it's purely e-commerce, but into the consumer retail section in America would be in wolverine.com, uh, www. So it's kind of a famous brand in US. They create the shoes cat. I'm pretty sure everybody must have heard of the shoes cat and Merrill. Merrill is used heavily in hiking. Um, and then Hush Puppy. So they've got a huge plethora of food apparels. We'll just go into the revenue breakdown of this uh, WWW. So Wolverine Michigan Group, Wolverine Boston Group. It's just different groups which produces different kinds of shoes of different, you know, sub brands. Um, and you can see the revenue breakdowns, gross profit and COGS and the operating income is nothing nothing unique nothing special as some of the other companies and maybe this is why he hasn't invested a lot and i i can totally understand why when i look into the financial statements so if i can take you to the financial statements and go into the income statement you can't see any specific gross profit growth so what what is his thesis so when I looked into the earnings per share and everything I couldn't see anything spectacular in the income statement for me to be uh, you know concerned about so that's when I go into the balance sheet and I saw they have a massive debt to equity so if you can go into their debt to equity here the debt to equity is 2.5 that is quite high um, so if you can go deep into the debt to equity you can see that 2018 2019 and 2020 and 2021 all these times the federal interest rates were all super low you know so they have a substantial amount of long-term debt at an extremely short interest rate so this is purely a debt play by michael burry so what he is doing essentially is he knows that this company has got lots of long-term debt so they're kind of in a safe spot because they can pay off this debt uh, by using their uh, retained earnings or you know cash cash there isn't much cash left to pay off their long-term debt so they have to use their return earnings or they can use their cash flow to pay off their long-term debt but they're kind of okay during the interest rate hike because their interest is basically not like the people who take interest today because their interest will be substantially higher they are the people who took the interest many years back and they have got a low interest play and they can use this cash flow to reduce their long-term debt or even go into the banks and negotiate and refinance kind of situation where in they can reduce this long-term debt Debt at a higher interest rate payment as well so this is purely from the looks of it a simple long-term debt play by michael burry but if you're buying this stock i would highly suggest that you get out of the position once it moves you know in your direction so it's already got a slight pop so i'd assume this is initially from that purchase of michael burry and then um you know going up so based on the valuation as well i completely forgot about the valuation so i valued it to be around 25 dollars um a share so now it is trading at $15 a share so that is also another advantage of this uh, this company so the valuation is also kind of telling me that it is undervalued it is not undervalued into the 50% margin of safety but it is definitely undervalued slightly if you're not interested in it it is totally understandable because this is a complex subject about this leverage play so the next stock is MGM Resorts so I don't have to explain to you what MGM Resorts does it basically 
uh, is involved in casinos and gambling and hotel industry. So I'll just go through the revenue breakdown of it. So it's got the Las Vegas Strip, which is the one that's most famous for. It's got lots of events like boxing events and all the other uh, casino based uh things that they bring in the people in there and and the gambling is always a great industry because it's a guaranteed cash flow you know what you're going to get and people are always going to gamble uh, they've also got MGM in China and many other things. So revenue revenue breakdown is pretty simple. The advantage of MGM is that it is quite a consistent cash flow business. I wouldn't call it a growth stock. Again, this is one of the things that um, Michael Burry is going to play. So this is again one of those leverage plays, the debt play that Michael Burry is going to do. So in order to understand that, I want you to first look at the debt to equity. So if you can see the debt to equity is 7.01. This is the highest debt to equity we have seen across in all these stocks uh, today. Now you might wonder what did they do with this debt? Well, technically all they did is buy back their own stocks. So they have been buying back their own stocks for the past five years or so. Uh, so what's the point in buying back the stocks? So what they're basically doing is they're taking loans at an extremely low interest rate for the past five years because the interest rates were quite low. And then they are in turn buying their shares because they know that their shares is going to go up. So they've been buying shares at $20, $30, uh, $15 and all those times. And now the market has gone all the way back up to $45. So they were paying like 1% per annum on these um, interest payment and then their stock that they purchased have now gone up to four or three dollars so it's like it's so much of an easy play this is again similar to the uh, debt scenarios that we discussed before now if I can go into the financial statements of MGM Resorts just go into their balance sheet you can see their consistent uh, play in the long-term debt there and they have tried to reduce the long-term debt in 2022, MGM Resorts, uh, because of the high interest. So I found a tweet uh, in in one of the website which Michael Burry himself has said, companies that are highly leveraged but have the cash flow and termed out debt have options today, including reducing their debt loads at a significant discount brought on by high interest rate, which is exactly what we're going through right now. And that's his play in multiple of the stocks that we've seen, including WWW and uh, this one here. Uh, better off buying the stock, but as Graham said, in such a case, better off buying the stock. So now he also mentioned another tweet, uh, low price to cash flow business are different today was 2007 because they will buy back stock, buy back debt at a discount and in general, manage capital structure better. Make some statistical values, math problems that more or less must work out. So these companies are so healthy that they can take the debt when the stock price is down at a low interest rate because the interest rate was so low. And then when the stock price rises, they make lots of money from the purchase of the stock. And then they pay back the debt because they made money from the purchase of the stock. And also the EPS gets better because they have like taken out the outstanding shares because they have actually bought back the shares. So based on my valuation, it's kind of in a fair value. So I don't expect it to go up substantially. Uh, so you have to be extremely aggressive on this one if you wish to buy the stock. Uh, I don't think Michael Berry will be staying on the stock that long either. But as they reduce the debt by paying off the debt, then uh, it will be kind of a push for the stock to go up because it's now trading at a fair price and because this is possibly a purchase that he did maybe last month, December or November, October. I'm not really sure which price he bought it. Um, so maybe this trade is already out of your picture because the market is trading at a fair value. I will not be purchasing MGM Resorts for sure because there is uh, there is no edge in the fair value situation. The last stock in Burry's portfolio is Sky West Airlines. So this has got only 2 million in his portfolio and that's the smallest one. And, and there's a reason why it is the smallest one because it's an airline company. Um, and airline companies are not that great of a business because of the union issues and also the costs. Now, I'll just go through the revenue breakdown here. So SkyVest Airlines and there's, they also have leasing as well. So again, a typical uh, airline business, not much return, not much growth either. Um, so why is that interesting? In it? it is pretty simple. It's the price to book ratio. So if I can go into the overview, 
I will see the price to book ratio is 0 0.4 dollars so what is price to book ratio I've already talked about it in this video so it's basically total assets minus total liabilities what do you get that's basically price to book ratio so if you can take out the assets and subtract the liabilities like if you are selling your company for scrap what do you get that's basically uh, the price to book ratio so this is trading below one dollar that means it is like so cheap that it is easy money so that's purely the bet that Michael Burry is doing. So you can see the market cap is $961 million, right? Now, if I can go into the balance sheet and see the cash, cash here. Yeah? So I think you should ignore the 2020 because they have like lots of unfilled uh, areas. So just focus on the 2021. So the cash alone of the current assets itself is 1069. This company could go for broke can liquidate today and still you will make twice the money because that's what the price to book value is telling you so this is again a pure flipping stock play it's not holding it for the long term he will be thinking of doubling the money because now the price to book value is 0 0.4 so i assume he is trying to sell the shares at maybe and now it's what, what is it now now it's almost 20 dollars a share so you might be thinking of getting out at 40 dollars and maybe if he's aggressive he might get out at 30 dollars we've, we've gone through lots of stocks which michael burry has bought overall i think it's seven uh, and all these stocks you can see he has got the growing companies you know he's got that e-commerce company he's got the leverage debt play going on which companies have high leverage and the long-term debt and he has also got the price to book value as well so you can see a plethora of stocks which he has invested in so next time when you invest and in, try to adopt some of these strategies don't be uh, scared about when you see high debt don't be scared when you see um, you know the market has been crashing down aggressively because these are all great opportunities and these are all great opportunities for you to buy into the stock so I hope you you've learned a lot in this uh, video use whatever you've learned and come up with some great stocks and have fun hope you have a great day bye bye